This episode is brought by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Paleo Myths. Last time, we evaluated how paleontologists and paleo artists know, at least in part, how prehistoric animals looked, what they're purely guessing. Today, I have a myth I've wanted to tackle for a long time. You know them, you love them, we've seen them before in a previous paleo myth. We're returning to the dome headed Pachycephalosaurus, which was probably a grown Draco Rex and grown Sticky Moloch, though the latter may be another species of Pachy. It's one of my favorite herbivorous dinosaur species, with such a gnarly look and possible behaviors, so I'm excited to talk about it again. Did these Cretaceous critters use their impressive skulls for headbutting, as is so commonly depicted in so much paleo media? I don't know, man. Let's dig this up. Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis is a smaller ornithischian dinosaur that roamed western North America at the very end of the Cretaceous 66 million years ago, living alongside the epic Dakotaraptor, Nanotyrannus, and a Nanotitan. Oh, oh god! Wait, scratch that. Living alongside the epic Triceratops and Monosaurus, Ankylosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus. There we go. For decades, it has been a fan favorite dinosaur that has appeared in many, many different paleo media. In most of its appearances, it's reconstructed as some fearsome, battering ram of an herbivore ready to take on any adversary who comes its way. Whoever is unfortunate enough to mess with this animal will end up crushed by the Dome of Death. Then, in order to assert dominance or settle disputes, Packies resort to violence, ramming their heads together. Sometimes this is depicted as a charged up run and smash, other times they stand face to face to bump noggins. Whichever you go with, that's besides the point to me. They are hypothesized to have engaged in a gnarly form of intraspecific combat that can be observed today in musk oxen and rams. Although Pachycephalosaurus, as well as several other dome-headed Pachycephalosaurids, could have used their domes for other functions such as display and self-defense against small to mid-sized predators, the scope of this video will be covering the intraspecific combat between two rivals of the same species. And again, this will also apply to other family members within Pachycephalosauridae, a group of marginocephalians that we have record of living in the late Cretaceous, mostly in North America and Asia. So, did they fight by slamming their domes together? Did this occur as it so often does in movies, books, games, and documentaries? What's the evidence? Back in the Maastrichtian stage, at the end of the Cretaceous, it should be noted how, yeah, cameras weren't invented back then. Scientists don't have any videos to examine Pachycephalosaurus agonistic behavior. No Twitch Pachys trying to win a victory royale. So then, how can we tell if these fire tuck dinos did this? Well, there are four lines of evidence, four big questions we should analyze. Number 1. Did Pachycephalosaurids possess anatomical adaptations that would have made headbutting possible and survivable? Number 2. Do their thick skulls show signs of crashing into other skulls? Basically, is there damage? Number 3. Is this skull damage specific to domed Pachycephalosaurids? If dinosaurs had a tendency to accidentally run into trees or something, we can't roll that out for these guys. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? And number four, was the trauma actually caused by combat? If it can be proven that the thick boys had a significantly greater amount of cranial pathologies while ruling out other possibilities for such damage, then I'll give it to the myth. Thankfully, loads of research has been done on Pachys within the past 15 years, so there's good work to draw from. Let's start with that first question. Are there adaptations for agonistic headbutting? <laughs> Definitely not. Not that I can see around here. Okay, that's an obvious one. Yes, many Pachycephalosaurids had giant helmets to absorb the impact of smashing into another half-ton aggressor. In the largest family member, Pachycephalosaurus itself, this dome could be 10 centimeters thick. 
That level of thickness puts Mr. Krabs to shame. It's not enough to have a big head though. Modern Skull Crashers have other traits aside from big head. One segment I remember from the dino documentary Bizarre Dinosaurs that I reviewed years ago is that our good friend Jack Horner argued Packies couldn't headbutt because their skulls were comprised of oddly brittle bone that would shatter on impact. From time to time, Horner has some good ideas, but this doesn't seem to be one of them. Throw this in the trash bin of bad Horner ideas. Send him to the principal's office and have him expelled! The subsequent papers I've read don't support this description. Perhaps he confused the spongy, cancellous bone present in the middle of the domes for being fragile? Who knows? One fascinating 2011 study compared the morphologies of two Pachy relatives, Stegoceras and Pranocephale, with the modern ungulates known for head striking, and those that aren't known for that. What doctors Eric Snively and Jessica and Theodore found was that the dino heads were far, far more similar to the edgy head smacking musk oxen, bighorn sheep, and dukers, doikers than those who don't, like the llama and to some extent the giraffe, which smack each other around in a unique way. Like say, rams, pachycephalosaurids had an extremely hard exterior of the skull, followed by a deep, cushy layer of cancellous bone underneath to help absorb the impact. The researchers also found vascular canals, conduits they even said, that connect to the bone surface. These would have fed nutrients to a protective keratinous covering on the dome, and these canals are protected by more compact bone around them. All variables considered, pachycephalosaurids group well with modern fighters. I should also mention the position of the neck, since this is a unique adaptation when compared to other dinosaur lineages. Usually, we see necks that connect to the back of the head, but in these potential rammers, the neck connects to the bottom. So when two angry individuals line up their weapons and smash, it forms a straight line, so stress is transferred from the dome directly into the rest of the body to be dispersed. Even if it's a Hollywood blockbuster, The Lost World has a perfect scene on this. See the... Packy's neck attaches at the bottom of its skull instead of the back of its head is with reptiles, which is perfect for absorbing impact. That's question one out of the way. We can put a big check mark next to it. Since we've proven that they have the headgear for such combat, next up, do their domes show damage caused by hitting others? Well, once again, I gotta say... Yes! Large impacts, lesions, and injuries are often found on these Cretaceous coverings, such as this one individual identified as Pachycephalosaurus, with these two giant trauma sites described in 2012. It's not only this one poor unfortunate soul, According to one 2013 analysis by Peterson, Dishler, and Longrich, 22% out of 109 pachycephalosaurid skull specimens showed evidence of injury. However, not all family members had domes, and some of the domeless fossils may be from the immature or from females, and these showed no signs of trauma. For a partially domed specimen like Stegoceras and Gravitholis, 35% showed lesions on the frontal bone, while in fully domed species such as the family's namesake, a whopping 63% showed this damage. Now that's a lot of damage! So uh, yeah, I think we can put it away that dome dinos hit their heads all the dang time, while the flat chicks did not. That's numbers 2 and 3, easily checked off. Lastly, for each of these cranial pathologies, were these really caused by blunt force trauma, or were there some other mysterious forces at work? Many different scenarios can leave marks on bone. Weathering and erosion from exposure to the elements, scavenging from nearby predators, infection, insects making a home in your rotting carcass, tons of things can cause despair to a fossil specimen. Well, I guess we'll never know for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding. This myth gets win after win after win. Going back to that helmet description from 2012, several other variables are crossed off. 
bone resorption, which we know occurs in other related marginocephalians, the ceratopsids, when they're remodeling their frills, is not happening here. When bone resorption occurs, it's in thin sections of the skull, occurs internally and externally, and leaves a smooth, nice surface texture. None of this is true in the pachycephalosaurid sites. On to the scavengers, paleontologists aren't finding tooth marks or drag marks attributable to feeding. We find fossils with bite marks all the time, this ain't it. The lack of mandible marks from insects too rules that one out. According to the authors of this paper, cracks and fracture patterns, often considered signs of erosion, are not present either. To put a stake in each of these, pachy skulls often show signs of healing, so we know the animal survived the injury. You can't be scavenged, you can't be eroded if you're still kicking. My death was greatly exaggerated. No, the damage on their helmets is attributed to the most likely scenario, trauma. This group of dinos were injuring their noggins and later developing an infection called osteomyelitis. Infection of the bone and surrounding tissue, often caused by open exposure to the elements from fractures. Now we can piece all the evidence together. So we have a group of domed pachycephalosaurids. They were built different, built with strong heads that can absorb blows. The thick-headed boys took lots of punishment, punishment that the flatheads did not, and we can prove that the cranial damage was caused by trauma. Put this all together to see, yeah, this one's a no-brainer. Many strange ideas over the years have been repeated in pop culture and paleo art or have even been started by misguided paleontologists. Pachycephalosaurus, along with its kin, were time and time again portrayed as late Cretaceous rams, slamming their heads together in competition until the loser backs down. Although several other myths have either not been supported by evidence or are outright false, this one's different. Questions have arisen over the validity of this interpretation, but whenever put to the test, the myth keeps hammering the skeptics. Like some modern bovids, it seems very apparent that they did in fact bite by clashing domes. Like I said before, we did not have video cameras in the late Cretaceous, but without video evidence, we're about as close as we can possibly get. Meaning, this is the first myth we can call Perfection. Well, this was an easy one to write. It's good to be skeptical and not jump to any conclusions. Sometimes the evidence doesn't always pan out the way you think, but yeah, other times the simplest answer is the best answer. What's obvious is obvious. Though it's good experts put these ideas to the test so we know for sure. Don't take anything for granted. May new information come out in the future to contradict the headbutt hypothesis? Sure, it's possible. But as of now, it seems like this definitely happened in the Maastrichtian forests all those years ago. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like, subscribe, and to check out my social media. See you next time.